Welcome everyone, this is Summer Sound and I'm Johan. I'm Maggie. And today we have a special guest. Yes, we have Imbalori. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi Imbal, uh, welcome and many thanks for uh, joining us for a little chat about improv. Yep. My name is Imbal, I'm an Israeli, I live in Berlin for six years and I'm an improviser and an actress and a writer, but mainly an improviser. Today uh, we are going to talk about solo improv. Okay. Yeah, uh, you do solo improv shows, uh, you also have workshops. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit about what is solo improv in the first place? So it's when uh, you uh, go on the stage all by yourself and improvise a show. Uh, it depends on the length. It could be half an hour, 50 minutes. Uh, maybe longer, uh, all by yourself, and then you would play all the characters and the story and uh, everything that might happen, which is always like a huge, you know, question mark, what's going to happen? Because you, you cannot really know, can you? Yeah, that's what it is. Um, I guess compared to improv with other people, um, where you have a safety net and other people can give you ideas or help you out in, in the, when, there's, yeah, when you're stuck. We don't have that with solo improv. No, that's why it's, uh, yeah, that's why it's a liver, a, another level of difficulty for me in improvisation. Also a lot of fun, but yeah, there, there's like nobody to edit you out. There's nobody to bring you inputs from the outside in the middle of the show. It's kind of like, yeah, it's all on you, basically. Yeah, it's difficult. It's hard. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, I think some people who do it, they kind of do it very lightly uh, because they have a set of skills that like Jacob Bennigan, for example, who's an amazing storyteller. He yeah. could just, in my opinion, could never get stuck. Cause da -da 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 -da. Uh, I find it more challenging, um, especially because I'm not such a disciplined storyteller. I'm more like a jazzy, I'm like, ah, whatever comes up, uh, like inspiring myself. So to find out the actual story, how to end it, what do you need to bring back in real time is like a huge challenge. But at the same time, very enjoyable because it's like a rabbit hole, right? And once you go down the rabbit hole, you don't know where it's going to take you. And you can end up in really weird places. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. In Bali, solo improv. Um, sometimes it's necessary to bring in some other characters. So you play several characters at the same time. Yeah. Um, how do you do that? Do you choose characters that you already are familiar with or did you just jump on anything that comes into your story? Yeah, I don't think I choose like, or if I, I mean, of course I choose, but it's like, it's all happening so fast. It's not like a conscious kind of choice. But of course that I have a bank of characters that I like and some of them are some of them are very comforting characters and some of them are very like go-to characters where I know like if I don't know where the story is going I could just you know have some fun for a little bit with this character that I find very comfortable and relaxing to be in and then that could might get me to the next point. So uh, so yeah but every once in a while of course there's this like you get to this unexpected place and that brings an unexpected character out of you which goes like, oh, I've never seen that one before. And that's pretty, and that's pretty awesome too. Yeah. yeah. Did it never happen that at a certain point in time you really were stuck? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Overcome that, but what do you do? Mm, yeah, it's a good, like this is exactly those challenging moments I was talking about before. It's like, you don't know how to take, or you, like there's something about improvisation is that from the outside, people will always have ideas on how you should move on, right? Yeah. And when you're in the inside, what happens to me personally is where I go like, I cannot think of any other direction that I can go now, which would be interesting for me. You know, it's like you're drained. It's like, I don't know where the story is going. It's kind of like stuck. And I don't have the imagination or the energy to go anywhere because it all seems like um, like a dead end or too much energy and not going to lead to anything yet. But I think that a good thing to remember is that this is only in my head. The audience from the outside see a lot of potential. And the audience from the outside can think that it can go many places. So it's only me who thinks that it cannot go anywhere because I'm in. The, and how the uh, Steve from Three for All said, you had the worst seats in the house. You're watching the show from within the stage. 
it's the worst place to watch it from. So you're not the one to judge if it could go somewhere or not. So I think the only thing you can do really is just like to start something. Something else. And, and it depends in, depending on where you are in the story, it might be just make your character go in, into bigger trouble or start rescuing them from the trouble. It doesn't matter, but just do something and just be interested in that one thing that you do. And that will bring more ideas because if you try to figure it out in your head, it's, it's hard. But it's easy to say, right? I mean, in real time, sometimes, you know, I forget that thing myself. <laughs> um, is solo improv something you could recommend to, end, to all the improv players? I think this, this, uh, this workshop is good uh, even if you're not planning to ever go solo. And uh, it's good because it's, you're meeting yourself in the, in the most, uh, most um, one-on-one -on -one circumstances and all your flaws are going to come, like, it, it, they will manifest. It's amazing. Like, if you're not listening, you won't listen to yourself. If you're, not, if you're blocking, you'll block yourself. <laughs> if you're, uh, I don't know, doing too much emotion and not enough narrative, that will happen. If you only do a narrative and nothing else, that will happen. Like, everything, all your flaws just, just come to be. So I think it's a very good challenge for improvisers. And also just to uh, develop this confidence of, like, even if nobody shows up on stage, I'm going to be fine. I'll be fine for four minutes. Four minutes is a lot, you know? I can, I can pull out four or five minutes by myself and I'll be fine. That's a very good liberating feeling, I think, in improvisation. Many thanks uh, for this great chat about solo improv. And in the next episode, we are going to talk a bit about dark and uncomfortable topics and improv. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Imbel. See you soon.